Bob Woodward's forthcoming book reportedly claims that President Trump is jeopardizing national security. So is it a salacious jab aimed at selling books, or is there any truth to the matter? Let's bring in Fox News contributor, former CIA station chief, Daniel Hoffman. Great to see you tonight. Good to see you, too. Let's start with North Korea. Obviously, this president has had a very different way, a very different strategy of handling this than previous administrations. So what do you make of these competing reports? First of all, that Kim Jong-un has reached out in a letter. We, I would like another meeting. He didn't display the big nukes at this parade, but at the same time reports that he hasn't slowed his nuke program at all. Yeah, I think my good friend Andy Kim, who runs the CIA's mission center, Korea Mission Center, uh, is, he and his team are working overtime to discern um, Kim Jong-un's true intentions. Um, Kim Jong-un has not indicated at all that he's willing to negotiate uh, for an, um, an itinerary for denuclearization. He hasn't provided an inventory of his nuclear weapons and his ICBMs. In short, he hasn't really taken any concrete steps towards denuclearization. He appears to want to get maximum economic gain without giving up any of the nuclear program on which his regime security relies. Do you think that's what this outreach is about, this letter, which the White House describes as warm and kind? I mean, do you think that he realizes because of that last visit by, that was scheduled with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo that we yanked it at the last minute, the president right. said he's not going? Do you think that they realize, all right, we've got to try to play a little bit nice, uh, to well, get he's, this he's, going got a, again. he's got a two-track policy. He's hosted Secretary Pompeo three times. There would have been a fourth visit, as you said, but that didn't happen because the president rightly canceled it. Uh, Kim Jong-un has called our diplomacy gangster-like. And so while on the one hand he's delivering what my Estonian friends like to call pancakes and jam to the president and try to establish good rapport with our president, which is fine, at, at the same time he really hasn't shown any inclination to do the real negotiations. At the end of the day, it's what Ambassador Bolton said today, which is President Trump will open the door. It's a question of whether Kim Jong-un wants to walk through it. And I think we have to be prepared for the fact that he might not. Also opening the door, Russia. Apparently, uh, Putin has invited, sent a letter inviting uh, Kim Jong-un to, uh, Jong to go visit him. A Russian leader said uh, that Kim has told her he wants to go without delay. He accepts the invitation. Right. Kim Jong-un is playing off the great powers against one another. He and his uh, relatives who ran that um, uh, totalitarian regime over the years have been doing that. They played off China and Russia against each other, and now they're, they're playing them off against us. Russia and China have already indicated that they want to reduce or eliminate the sanctions before denuclearization. They would also like to reduce or eliminate our presence, our military presence on the peninsula. So, I mean, that's, Kim Jong-un recognizes that. He's trying to use it to his advantage. I want to ask you, too, about this uh, report that there are various nations, including the Palestinians, uh, that they are trying to press the ICC to bring criminal charges, war crimes against U.S. officials and soldiers in Afghanistan. Here is what former Ambassador Bolton had to say about whether we're going to go along with that. We will not cooperate with the ICC. We will provide no assistance to the ICC and we certainly will not join the ICC. We will let the ICC die on its own. After all, for all intents and purposes, the ICC is already dead to us. The ACLU responding to that, saying this misguided and harmful policy will only further isolate the United States from its closest allies and give solace to war criminals and authoritarian regimes seeking to evade international accountability. I mean, this is a continuation of U.S. policy. It's not a whole lot that's new. I think the genesis of the ICC was righteous. It was, it was in large part after the uh, genocide in Rwanda. Uh, and the ICC was supposed to investigate crimes against humanity and war crimes and genocide, and that's all fine. But if national courts uh, are only if national courts are unwilling or unable um, to prosecute, and in the case of the United States and Israel, we kind of live by the rule of law, and I think that uh, we're just fine without the ICC, and it does infringe upon our on our sovereignty, and so that's. That's, I think, what Ambassador Bolton yeah. is saying. It seems to follow a theme that the ambassador, the president, many in this uh, administration are saying that they are not going to be told what to do by the international community in many cases, including the ICC, apparently. Daniel Hoffman, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Good to see you.